getting to the bow cabins. A 100-year-old shipwreck was discovered in Whitefish Point, Michigan. We get kind of this interesting view of the bottom of the lake and occasionally a little anomaly will pop up. Then we'll have to go back and investigate it. A lot of times it's nothing, but then suddenly you see something. You go back, you take a closer look, and when we're lucky, it's a shipwreck. It's a big tear in the side. The Huronton was 800 feet below at the bottom of Lake Superior. It's just astounding. And in this particular case, this is a shipwreck that no one has seen for 100 years. Oh, the mass is right there. It looks like one of the booms is laying. I don't want to be around that. On October 11th, 1923, the 238-foot-long Huronton collided with another ship. It was coming up through heavy fog, but there were also forest fires going on at the same time. So big, big forest fires. So you combine that smoke with fog and really they probably had trouble seeing one of the ship from the other uh, as they were sailing. But the captain of the Huronton, which many of them would do, decided let's just keep forging ahead. We're going to keep moving. They got beyond Whitefish Point. They're getting up into the lake and probably roughly about 20 miles northwest of Whitefish Point. That's where the Huronton and the Cetus, the other ship, plowed into each other. And then suddenly this massive crash, uh, you know, people are being knocked off their feet, knocked out of their bunks if they're sleeping, if they're off watch or off duty. You know, on both ships, everybody knew what their worst fear traveling in fog had just occurred. So the Cetus had plowed into the port side, basically the left side of the Huronton. You know, those two ships are locked together at this point. The crew on the Huronton is scrambling to get on board the bow of the, the Cetus to save their own lives. As they exited, one passenger went back for a prize possession. And the first mate of the ship on the Huronton realized that their mascot, a bulldog, was still back in the galley, jumped from the safety of the Cetus, got back onto this sinking ship, the Huronton, ran back to the galley, grabbed the bulldog, came running back, but very, very fortunate when it comes to loss of life because there was none. Reaching the ship took high-tech equipment. So we have what's called an ROV. It's a remotely operated vehicle. It's like a little robot, but it, it dives down. It's got high definition cameras. It's got high intensity lighting. And with that ROV and through those, you know, through the camera on that, we're seeing a wreck that was last seen by human eyes almost exactly 100 years ago and suddenly now materializing in front of you, you know, are just, you know, open hatchways and gangways and, and uh, you know, portholes that you can see inside the porthole and see things inside of a room or see doors in a gangway. Uh, you can see electric lights. The ship will not be touched. The state of Michigan and anything that's in Michigan waters is protected by certain laws. And now those ships are protected. And the discovery will educate museum visitors and piece together history. What we'll do is we'll tell this story. And, and really, I think this is why there's a certain level of importance to finding these shipwrecks and being able to maybe close out the story and having a better understanding of what really happened to that ship, what happened to the crew, what the story might tell us one thing, but what actually happened can be revealed after we find one of these shipwrecks. And so for us, we'll keep that history alive. For Inside Edition Digital, I'm Andrea Swindle.